So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk through my process of how I find and photograph compositions in woodland, like the one I took in this beautiful area here where I walk pebbles. We may have it all Up the ladder, down the wall Different mysteries Full life mixed with tears We are happy most of the time And we get along better and fine Okay, morning everybody, and fantastic to see you all again. So, I am at Canuck Chase, which is a new woodland for me, and I thought it'd be really good to show you how I go and explore a new woodland and look for compositions. So I'm going to go and have a look, see what I can find, and hopefully we might get a little bit of rain and a little bit of atmosphere, because at the moment it's fairly flat light. So what I want to do is try and talk about some tips that I can share about how I go about looking for woodland compositions, because it is really difficult, um, I, I find. It's, it's one of the most difficult compositional challenges I think in photography because it's quite chaotic woodland photography. So I've got a few things that I look for and one of them, the first one, is framing. So trying to think about how the trees that you're trying to shoot are framing the scene and that could be maybe one or two trees or just some opposing trees and how they're working together to frame the scene. And, and, and these are tips, they're not like rules, you don't have to have all of these things to make a good photo, but I find that if you can get these, then it can be a good way of creating something really special. And I've just spotted something over here which looks really good. There's three trees that I think just work together as a group of trees, but they also frame really well together. So we'll go over there, have a look at it, and I can take this shot. I've got these three trees over here. You can see um, there's one sort of silver birch where you can see the silver of it on, on the left hand side. There's another one um, just next to it going straight up. And then that one sort of frames the top of the image because the, 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 the sort of branch of that goes over. And then that leads into the third one in the background that you can see that the leaves are just sort of backlit a little bit. Now the light's not perfect on this, but Really, it's, it's more about trying to find compositions and having the perfect lighting conditions because the lighting conditions aren't right now. So what I want to do is try and find those compositions that ultimately I can come back to um, and, and check out as well in Lightroom afterwards and then come back to when the light's a little bit better. So this looks good. I've got the shot and we'll talk about some other framing shots as I walk around. So one of the most important things in woodland is distractions and making sure that you don't have too many things that are distracting within your shot. You want the viewer to be looking at the things that you want them to look at and not be distracted by things you don't want them to look at. And you can see as I walk through this woodland here, it's a beautiful woodland, there's some really nice old silver birch and the bracken have changed colour. But above me there's the sky and you can see there's a definite line between the tree line and the sky line. And that doesn't look great. Your eye immediately goes up into that. And it's one of the things that you can do really easy by composing your shot differently. For instance, in this shot, I could make it as a pano or I could zoom in a little bit and get rid of that sky. But the best thing that gets rid of that and helps to blend the sky in is fog. And it's one of the reasons that I like fog so much. It's not that that fog's just creating layers and depth to the image, but it's helping to blend together those bright areas in the sky that you often get in woodland. But on a day like this where we haven't got fog and we've got the, the sky, that's those white patches, it's all about trying to find 
compositions that totally exclude the sky. I think it's starting to rain. That's good. Keep going. Okay, so first of all, I'd say that I struggle with woodland photography and I think anybody that does woodland photography struggles. So all the photos you see that are great take a lot of time and effort to find. And I'd also say again that the conditions that I'm in today, where we've not got any wet foliage and there's no fog makes it more difficult. But I have found something here that's really interesting. So I thought I'd talk about this because it, it, it shows two tips in one really. Um, the first one is making sure that the foliage at the bottom of the frame, so the foliage that we've got sort of down here, is, is interesting. So I've got this, this um, fern here, and then I've got a green fern just on this trunk here, which looks really good. So, so making sure you've got something at the bottom that's not too distracting, maybe you've got a little bit of interest, but sort of leads right into the scene is, is important. And then the other tip, in, which is shown on this one, is making sure that your branches or your trunks are aligned in a way that's pleasing. So, you know, it's sometimes difficult to stop them all being crossed over, but really what you want to try and do is not have multiple crossed over trunks, because sometimes just moving left or right just a little bit can make a difference. So I'll show you, if I just take this off, you can see that if I, if I just moved this way, then that just actually opens up that trunk in the background. Um, and you can see that where it was before, the trunk is hidden in the background. So you've either got to be here where it hides the trunk or here where it shows that tree in the background, but you don't really want to be here where that tree in the background is becoming entangled in the foreground tree and making the scene look a little bit more complicated. So what you're trying to do is declutter this chaotic scene, this chaotic woodland scene. And by moving your camera just small distances like this can make such a big impact on the composition of a woodland scene. So one of the things that I like to look for in woodland is contrasts. So that might be contrast between colors or contrasts between textures or shapes. And in this case behind, you can see that there's this really old, really interesting oak tree and it's got a contrast of bark. So there's, there's some bark on this side of it that's probably dying off, I should think. So it's gone a little bit lighter. It's catching the light really nicely. And then that contrasts really well with the dark bark of the oak. And then also we've got the straight um, silver birches contrasting with the twisted silver oak in the background. I shot another shot here as well that also shared that contrast of the oak and the curly nature of the oak um, limbs and the straight nature of the silver birch. And I think sometimes that contrast within an image can produce something really powerful, as you can see in this one that I shot a few days ago. So one of the things that I find in woodland photography is it's really important to have a central character like Groot here. And if you can have a character, something that you can compose that composition around, then it just adds something special to that composition. 
and it doesn't have to be something like Groot, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? It could just be a broken branch or just a dead tree or a tree with some strange limbs or a tree that's got some contrast to the other group of trees around it. But having that central character can really set off your woodland photos. Okay, I need to take a picture of Groot. Now, it looked good, I think, with some fog here, as I say, with all my woodland shots, but it'd be wrong not to take a photo of him. I'm back at my studio now and I had a great morning just looking around that new location down in Staffordshire and just trying to find some compositions. Um, when I go to a new location, I, I always feel that there's loads of potential there. With woodland photography, I think there's just so much to photograph that sometimes you get a, a bit, your mind gets a bit boggled by all the different compositions, but the more you go to a location, the more you find um, better compositions, I find. But the conditions weren't great then. It was dry foliage and there was no atmosphere, no fog, no mist, no low cloud or anything like that. But I really enjoyed it and I, th I think I got some good compositions to go back to and hopefully you found um, that useful in terms of the way I go about looking for compositions in woodland. There's a few other things that I just want to talk about as well. But um, what I wanted to say as well is that my woodland photography, um, just like all my elements of photography, but particularly my woodland photography, has only progressed, I'd say, in the last sort of five years. Um, prior to that, I didn't shoot a lot of woodland, and it was a big learning curve for me when I started shooting it. Uh, and I found it, uh, at first when I went into woodland, I used to just enjoy walking through woodlands. It was very relaxing for me. Um, you know, it was a good way of sort of de-stressing, just taking my time, just wandering through the woodland and, and just enjoying the, the, the moment, really. But then when I started taking more photos in woodland, um, I found it just fantastic because I felt like I had a little bit more time in woodland than when I go and take a sunrise or a sunset. You know, quite often the conditions stay the same for a longer time. Um, not always the case, but quite often they do. So I feel like I can slow down, relax, take my time and just take in that sort of atmosphere in the woodland, which I find really, really great. You know, and eventually I started to improve. You know, if you looked at the first shots I took of the Enchanted Oak, image then you know they weren't great I knew it was a good spot but I went back there multiple times before I finally got you know that 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 image that I, I really liked in the summer this year it's the same in many places if you look at this shot here this was a shot that um, I, I shot at the same time actually as I shot this image um, and and the difference is that it's just a few meters back and because I'd, I'd gone and I walk through this woodland all the time with pebbles. It means that I can start to spot things that are probably not so obvious. And I wanted to point out this one out because I think it's got a lot of elements that combines the sort of things that I was speaking about. So it's got an interesting um, tree, this beech tree here, but I didn't want to show the whole beech tree, um, ma ma mainly because I didn't think it was quite as interesting above, but I think it leaves a little bit to your imagination about this big tree sort of over the, the woodland. There's this broken arm of this beech tree here, which is a bit of the story. And then we've got this silver birch in the background, but then other trees as well. We've got this fern that's changing color. And I think all these things add up to make something that's quite interesting. But what really makes it is the fact there's a little bit of atmosphere there. And we've got this light area that your eye sort of goes through to. And that's quite a good thing that I didn't speak about, that having a light area within an image that your eye can go through into can really help out your, your woodland photos. Just like this one here is a good example of that, where you've got the path leading to that light area. I've got another one. In fact, there's another one in, in my calendar. Did I say I had a calendar? <laughs> Might have mentioned it a few times. <laughs> but the, yeah, there's another one in my calendar that is a good example of that. So we've got this here, and we've got this, this light area just, just here. I'll put it down here so you can see it a little bit better. So we've got this light area 
here and that sort of draws your eye through. So, so having a, a, an area in the middle that's a bit lighter can create depth and allow your eye to draw through the woodland in, in, into that, which, which can be really, really good. I wanted to go back into the woodland, um, into a different woodland in a minute, and just talk to you about one other thing, which is shooting when there's a little bit of light in the woodland, because I didn't, I didn't talk about that, because obviously I didn't have those conditions. But before I do that, I want to tell you about um, a new course bundle that I am I'm part of. It's called the Five Day Deal. And you might have heard of it before, but it's, it's a really, really good deal. I heard about it for the first time a couple of years ago. And it's basically a bunch of professional photographers that have got together and, um, uh, and, and we all put in a course and then we sell that course as a bundle, but try and do it as cheaply as possible. So we put all these courses together. I think the total value is almost $3,000 and, and we're selling it for $89 and donating 10% of that as well to charity. It's a brilliant thing. Um, I've got a new course that's just exclusive to that, which is all about shooting landscapes in all different types of lighting conditions. So go, go and take a look at it. The, the link's in the description. There's also some fantastic videos from people like Nick Page, Mass Peter Everson, who does this brilliant stuff on time blending in Photoshop. And then also Ryan Dyer, who is an amazing landscape photographer, talks all about how he processes astro photo images. Uh, absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. But th there's, I think there's over 22 courses in there for $89. It's, it's a steal, basically. So go, go and check it out. The link's in the description. And it's just for the next five days. Okay, we'll go back into the field now. If you've liked the video so far, please give it a like. It massively helps me and helps the algorithm of, of YouTube to promote the video to other people. And um, if you're not subscribed, then I'll click the subscribe button below. Okay, back out to me in the field with a bit of light. So what I like to do when the sun's out like this is try and find some backlit leaves like this. And if the sun's just coming through and casting on them, you also get some nice shadows, the leaves start to look good. And it can look amazing, especially if you get a little bit of mist like we're lucky enough to have this morning. <laughs> Pebbles is tied out. <laughs> right. But the key thing is try and do it when the sun's low and shoot into the sun and not with the sun behind you. Because if you shoot with the sun behind you, then you get shadows cast on the branches and it really doesn't look great. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next Sunday when I'll be talking about an amazing 250,000 subscriber giveaway. Bye.